OK, so uh, let's wait. OK. So, Anna, thank you very much for being here. As, uh, as director of the Korea Salon Alumni in GBSP Global, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy and I'm very proud that you accepted our invitation because having content and having an access of such professionals like you, it's, it's a kind of uh, very good intangible for us to understand how is working your sector, how is, I mean, employability in your sector, in your vertical, in your industry. So uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Let me let me introduce you briefly to the audience. OK, so so Anna, Anna is a senior executive with more than 15 years of experience leading international teams in technology, e-commerce and travel tech. She's currently the director of the strategic partnerships at Kayak. Many of you probably already know Kayak. If not, Google it and you will understand the, 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 how, does it, how does it work or what's the platform. She's also the co-founder of Women in e-Travel, an association of professional women that tries to, 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 to promote networking between digital travel industry professionals and EMEA markets, call it in, 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 in a woman perspective. She's, uh, she's, she declares herself passionate about people, employee engagement, young talent, career coaching, development, and promoting intercultural competences. So, Anna, very welcome. Thank you for being here and please. Uh, we are happy. We are very looking forward listening to your, your experience and, and, and what you could tell us about your sector and, and your expertise. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for, for having me today here, first of all. Um, let me share my screen. One second. Are you seeing my screen? Yeah. Uh, yes, but not the presentation. Okay, because I lost I lost your view. Um one sec. Okay. We we'll see your LinkedIn profile. Okay, no, no, it's not that. Um, one sec, sorry, last minute technology. Um, okay, here. Perfect. You see it correctly. Okay, yeah. awesome. Yeah. Hi. So thank you for having me today. It's, it's a pleasure. Um, I can see it's going to be a small group, so it's going to be kind of a private session. So I would love to also see um, the, the faces of the participants. For me, it's always better to, to see the audience and interact, see if you have any questions. I'm going to ask some questions as well. So if you feel comfortable, please uh, turn on your uh, webcam so I can see you. And if you feel comfortable as well introducing yourself on, on the chat, same, um, any questions along the session, please type in on the, on the chat box. So today we are going to talk about uh, how to score a big job in the tourism and, and travel and hospitality industry. And for that, I'm going to focus a lot on networking, so how to do networking and, and with who to do networking and some um, personal and, and professional tips that I learned along the years. So let's start by building uh, your personal brand and practice your networking skills. That's the first step to um, find your dream job now that you are um, either finishing the, the, the studies or already graduated. So let's move on. Uh, about me, Xavier already introduced me. 
So in, in terms of experience, there are so many job opportunities out there. So I've been working as even organizer, as marketing manager. I've been doing PR. I've been doing SEO, SEM, uh, marketing, business development, but always in the travel tech, uh, very focused on, on digital. So out of the traditional hospitality jobs in um, physical hotels or travel agencies, I always focus my career on the um, online travel. And that's why I'm going to focus a lot on, on digital networking and how to make the most of it for you to move on um, into the professional um, career path. Here's my LinkedIn. Feel free to invite me and, and add me on LinkedIn. That's where your network uh, either starts or, or continue to grow. So I'm happy to have you on my network as well. The content of today, it's yeah, how to find your dream job. Some tips around that. Why networking? Why I wanted to focus so much on networking and, and what are your goals? It's important that you understand what your goals are. So it's not just the networking for the sake of networking, right? You need to first understand why you want to use those uh, tools and, and those uh, channels and, and what's your end goal. So you can have a, a plan, like a marketing plan or a business plan, but for your personal brand. How to network, a few tips there. Where do we start? So yeah, networking, everyone talks about networking, but how do I start if I'm a newbie here? And as I mentioned, I'm going to focus a lot on LinkedIn because it's an amazing uh, professional network that we have there. It's for free. Anyone can join. Uh, and, and some tips, a three steps formula to have a rockstar profile. I'm going to share then some Q&A. And if we have time, I have also a bonus and uh, an exercise for you to take home and have some some homework. Thank you, Courtney, for uh enabling the camera it's nice to to see you as well okay how to find your dream job so there is no right or wrong answer it, it starts by you what do you want to do in in your career so obviously you have um your strengths you know yourself you need to stand out and and jump out of the fish tank. I, I put this picture because I think it's visualizing what I'm trying to say, right? So there is a blue ocean out there. So you just need to jump or think out of the uh, box and, and think, what do you want to do? What's uh, the, the, um, the job that you are trying to, to score? And think out of the traditional well-known uh, professions. There are so many different career paths out there. So I want you to think about, yeah, what, what's your dream job? Is it about a specific uh, specialty? Is it in a specific company? Is it, I don't know, having some work-life balance and I want to work on remote? What is it that it makes it your dream job? And then work and, and focus on standing out and jumping out of that um over work um fish tank and getting out of it so who are you i think it's important um to, to understand yourself so start by understanding your strengths so what are you good at what is your number one career goal how much experience you have so if you want to be i don't know marketing director in a travel online company so how much experience you have and what are the steps that you need to take to go there you have your studies which is a very important uh, base but yeah what are the next steps in terms of experience that can help you to go into that direction what's the work environment that you need so if i'm thinking about my dream job is it in an office is it working from home is it in a startup is it in a big company so Every person has a different definition of the work environment that they want and the dream job as well. So think about that. And also an important one, do what makes you happy. Even if you don't know yet what it means for your professional career, you are on, on your early stages there. So I think it's important that whatever you are working on, it makes you 
passionate and, and you are motivated about it. So think about yeah, what makes you happy because we work for so many hours. So it's important. Um, it's an important factor. And I think, yeah, we suffer a lot during COVID. So we deserve to be happy at work and at what we do. Think out of the classical job positions that, as, as I mentioned before, so we are all aware about the professional opportunities there, but there are so many more unexplored job opportunities. So just be curious and research, investigate what other uh, potential opportunities can be out there for you and network. So I'm going to repeat a lot this word network. Don't wait for the opportunities to come to you and create them. You have to, to, to give the first step and, and create those opportunities by growing your network, by asking um, your network for opportunities, by offering your help uh, and offering your support. So that's an important uh, tip I would recommend. And I would definitely start earlier if I look back into when I started in the professional um, in the professional um, my professional career so why networking find your why again before starting with a plan you need to understand yourself and why you are doing that right so what are your goals is it to find a great professional opportunity so you are looking for your first job or for your next job is it because you want to build your brand or you want to build your credibility, you want to continue learning from other professionals, maybe you are already working and you want to force partnerships, or just because you love networking and, and meeting people, and that's um, another area that you want to focus on, on the professional side of networking. So think about your goals, how to network. So start by creating your personal, your personal brand. That's very, very important. So. The good news is that you already have a personal brand, even though if you were not aware of and your personal brand, it's basically what the people that is around you think of you. So find out what they think about you, because that's your personal brand and that's how um, all the people perceive you as and how you want to be perceived out there. So that's very important before you start working on your networking. Um, skills and, and muscles. So what makes you unique uh, will help you differentiate your brand. So yourself, your studies or your job title, that doesn't mean anything. That won't people make remember you. So that's not what you want to highlight. There are so many other skills and, and, and um, keywords that you want to, to use for people to, to remember you. So if you want to stand out from the crowd and, and be seen for that job that you are applying and, and find your dream job, you need to share what makes you memorable and also what makes you remarkable, what makes you unique and, and what can you bring to them to the table, right? So what differentiates your brand? So what differentiates yourself? It can be your skills. You know yourself well, you've done that um self analysis so maybe that's something you want to highlight it can be your education you are very proud of your studies and your uh, degrees so you want to highlight your education interesting companies you've worked for so maybe you had some work experience or an internship or i don't know you had a company to develop a project and that's something you really believe it's it's um what makes your different and you want to highlight that it can be your hobby you may be really good at something that can help you to get to that job that you want to apply for achievements so anything during your life that can um yeah bring and add value into your uh personal brand so are you ready to start learning more about networking yes <laughs> So where do we start? Um, how to become effective at networking? A few tips here. So it's not about quantity, it's about quality. So look for the right people. And that works both on, on real life and also on digital and on LinkedIn, because we are going to be talking about LinkedIn. So find the right people that is going to help you to, to reach your goals, either if it's 
um, get to know other professionals from the industry or find your dream job or yeah, whatever is your goal, find who is the right people who is going to help you to go there. Be proactive. So networking is not just attending to an event and looking from the outside or not just creating a LinkedIn profile. You need to be proactive and it doesn't matter. It doesn't need to be every day or every week, but be constant and, and be proactive in communicating, in creating and developing new contacts and so. Be curious, ask questions. I, I really like when yeah, you go to an event and someone approach you and ask, what do you do? How this work? Um, what are, I don't know, the projects you are working on, on, on your current uh, company? So just ask questions. No one is going to get a no as an answer. If they cannot answer, of course, they will say, maybe I can not develop more. But yeah, that's the best tip I could ever give. Uh, keep track of your network. So follow them. Uh, what, what are the news? Have they changed their job? Have they, I don't know, appeared in, in, in a newspaper or did they finish a new degree? So just congratulate them. So keep track of yeah, what are the latest on, on your network, give and take. So it's not only for you to ask and, and, and take. So if you are good at something, offer uh, your help and, and your support. That's the best way to um, to strengthen that connection and and to yeah receive in the future obviously um, seek out for networking events as I mentioned there are so many events out there so it can be an alumni event that um, you are uh, going on or it can be a meetup it can be a convention a congress or just yeah, a, a city event that is happening and it's about a specific topic and you feel like you're going to find people who you share interest with. So that's um, an important and, and good way to start with your networking um, activities and networking online, which is the one that I'm going to focus later today. But yeah, everything that I'm going to share, you can apply it to the um, physical events and, and networking in general. So online networking, focusing on LinkedIn. So how to make the most of your LinkedIn profile? My first question would be for, for you. Do you have already a LinkedIn profile? Um, raise your hand or type on the chat bot if you do or if you do not. I think uh, it's very valuable for me to, to understand that. Um, and I'm going to talk about a few steps here. OK, good, Courtney, you have one. And I hope the rest, if you don't have it already, you're going to create right after the session today. So the first step is create a Rockstack profile. And by that, I mean not just having a LinkedIn uh, profile. Do you have a complete profile? Do you have a picture on it? How is your headline? Do you have your skills added there? So there are a lot of um, relevant information and, and important one that you need to fill in to really stand out of the um, of the LinkedIn network. So I'm going to show you a few tips that I hope are um, valuable and that are easy to apply. Then the second one is build real relationships. As I mentioned earlier, it's not about quantity, it's about quality. So we want to focus on having the right connections and, and engaging with them and building this real uh, connection um, with them. And then the third step, which I'm not going to focus that much because we don't have time today. And it's about creating and, and creating epic content. So we started earlier talking about creating your personal brand. So if you really want to become more influential and, and be seen by others and have kind of followers on, on your professional um, side, it's important that yeah you create and, and create uh, content so people can really um, have a look at, at your content and, and be interested in offering you new opportunities and so. So let's start with the first step, creating a Rockstar profile. As I mentioned, it's not enough to have 
uh, a LinkedIn profile. It's important that it is complete and has everything in this life. First impressions matters. So first tip, optimize your headline. So you can go creative. You can see my example here. Under my name, there is a headline space. Um, sometimes it's just a standard text in there, but there are so many options in there that you can um, yeah, that you can leverage off. So you can go as much creative as you want. There is a 120 characters limit for this space. And it's important that you use this space for um, adding the keywords that you want to get found. So this is the first thing that anyone visiting your profile is going to see beside your name and, and your um, background and, and profile picture. So what do you want to be seen for? What are the main keywords that you want to highlight? Is it your desired job title? So maybe you want to have there a call out for, for a job and what is it that you want to do? Is it an organizational or, or a membership association that you are part of and you want to highlight on your LinkedIn profile? Is it your expertise? That's the USP that you want to highlight. It can be. Is it anything else that uh, you have discovered about yourself and you want it to be the main headline of your profile? So think about that. Anna, the sec yeah. before we move on, I have a question from Lenny. Yes. Uh, he's, he said that he has stopped updating that his LinkedIn um, profile because of privacy concerns. Um, I don't what, know what, yeah. what privacy concerns may be because LinkedIn is very important when we, the professional world is our uh, professional brand, let's say. Uh, yeah. And he's asking for any other solutions. But what I would say is to, to, to not be concerned for any privacy issues. And if there you can is a, specific, there is a session. Lenny, perhaps. Mm -hmm. no, sorry to cut you. But yeah, maybe we need m more context around that yeah. concern. But I would say there is, it's not like easy to find, but there is a section on your LinkedIn where you can protect your, your privacy. So it can be fully open or you can protect your personal contact like email or exactly. picture and so on. So only the people your you want to see it exactly. will see it, but not anyone else. So there are some privacy protection options that are available on your LinkedIn profile. So that's more high level. I, I don't work for LinkedIn. So if you have a more specific concern or question and, and you can elaborate, yeah, we will try to, to get an answer for you. But don't, I mean, as a personal suggestion, don't add anything on LinkedIn that you don't want to share publicly, right? So just the information that you want to be out there. At the end, it's a, it's a, an online network, so you are yeah, deciding what information you want to show out there. But for personal details such as um, email, contact email or phone, I don't have my phone there, but some people has the phone contact and any other private details, you can hide it from, um, from the network. OK, let's move on then. So the next one is optimize your profile for search, so for SEO. Uh, I hope you are all familiar with what SEO means. So basically the same way that you are Googling something with the keyword that you want to find, LinkedIn works the same way. So you need to think about which are your keywords and use them in your headline, in your job title, in your summary, in your job description, everywhere. So the keywords that um, you want to be found and are relevant for your profile, for your uh, professional career, use them everywhere on your uh, on your LinkedIn profile. There are some useful online free tools like the one that I added here. So you can, uh, if you have already a CV with uh, some experience and background, you can just copy paste that in there and it's going to show you some uh, keywords based on what you have on your CV or you can just do some research and investigate 
um, what are the keywords that you want to be searched for. So, for example, in my case, it would be strategic partnerships, travel tech, digital marketing, online travel, um, women in travel, because that's the area that I'm more specialized. And those are the keywords that you will find on my profile. OK, so some examples moving on from the theory, but showing you some some real examples of um, different profiles. So Jeff Weiner, he's the executive chairman at LinkedIn. So you can see how he's using the cover photo. So many times by default, you don't have a cover photo and it looks like kind of empty. So use the cover photo from your profile. You can go creative here as well or use something very corporate, depending on, on your style and your uh, current situation. You can also, if you are very active, you can update it anytime you want, depending on the season, whatever, anything is possible. So get creative and you can use also some free tools like Canva and many others and um, your profile photo. Obviously, this is the basic. Um, if you want to work on your personal brand, you need um, an image in there. You are creating connections. You are developing your network. Then you may then see these connections in real life, in events. It's good to know with who you are talking to. Another example. Um, so here, Victoria, she's a colleague of mine at Kayak. She works on HR, um, but instead of having um, the job title in there, which would be talent or recruiter or HR, she's having something a bit more creative. So on a mission of building a dream team at Kayak and then the emojis. I love that. So it, it's clear value proposition and it's also mentioning the company. And I love having some emojis because yeah, it cuts up my attention and I look at them. So we all understand what's her role uh, instead of, yeah, just writing the role, she's communicating what's the added value that she's bringing in there. So that can be applied to any role. Um, another one, again with Jeff. So here it's very powerful, right? His title, so executive chairman. So he's very straightforward there, powerful title, powerful company, no other keywords <laughs> needed there. And in this case, it does make sense to have a cover image matching with the, um, uh, with the job title. Another one, so Adam Gran here uh, is using a mix of different keywords, so job title and company, expertise, and then some accomplishments. So organizational physiologies at Wharton, so that's the job title and company, and then expertise and accomplishment, best-selling author and host of the TED podcast, Work Life. So a mix of um, the different suggestions I had. And then he's using the, um, the cover photo to promote the latest book that he wrote. So if you are working on a special project or we, I don't know, you just published an article on your blog or anything you want to communicate, you can use that space, kind of a promotional space or advertising space. Again, as creative as you want to be. And my favorite one, um, this is a fake one. I tried to find it on LinkedIn. It doesn't exist, but it appears on many blogs and, and um, it's used in many webinars about how to um, use LinkedIn and, and how to optimize your profile, right? So here I introduce you to Santa. Um, he wouldn't need any further explanation, right? But the headline of his uh, LinkedIn profile is Global Director of Toy Distribution Delivering Joy and Wonder to Children at a Massive Scale. This is kind of yeah a wrap up of everything that Fantastic. we discussed. I love it. Yeah, <laughs> I would try to replicate it to, to yeah. myself. It's impossible. So I yeah, there is no better example than uh, Santa here. And you're going to yeah. love the description later on. <laughs> OK, so moving on to the summary now. So here is a longer section where you can really add a lot more information. Again, important that you continue using the keywords that you want to be found by. 
and use it to sell yourself. So think it as an elevator pitch and, and probably in, in some um, other webinars or maybe in the class or in an article, you have heard a lot about the yeah, elevator pitch when you are working on a startup or you are presenting a project. So you need to also think about your personal elevator pitch, how you want to be presented and how you are going to sell yourself whenever you go to an interview. 30 seconds, one minute, quick introduction about yourself. So this is your space, tell your story. Not only tell what you are doing or what you want to do, but how you are going to do it. So you are giving specific examples of what you can bring and how would you do it. Um, here are another example. So William from Salesforce, he's the um, uh, director of product management at, Sales at Salesforce. And I took his example because there is a mix of different uh, keywords and content in there. So He's talking about his passion, his skills, his accomplishments, and also he's talking about some uh, life and, and hobbies outside of work, which um, not everyone feels comfortable with, but he thought it was relevant for his profile. So you can see product manager, tech evangelist, um, I will SaaS platforms, products, and develop partner ecosystems, and then at the end, He's also telling that when he has free time, he practice photography, work on home improvement projects and follow a Formula One. So quick wrap up of who he is, what are uh, his accomplishments and, and his skills and also, yeah, what's um, he liking to do out of work. And back to Santa. So this is the best uh, description ever very aligned with the headline. I'm not going to read it all, just uh, some sentence, but it's giving you the idea of what I was mentioning before. Uh, I'm the happiest guy you will ever met. My cheer is infectious, infectious and I get thrills spreading it at scale. I love children too. I thrive on their faith in me. The combination of these two, of these two passions is why I'm in the business of making kids smile. Then he's also talking about sales and, and money. My idea of fun is patiently listening to winning customers sit on my lap in a mall and turning their toy request into 500 billion in sales. Boom. He's also talking about business, not only about happiness and, and joy. Um, then I manage a team of 300,000 three food direct reports who live and breathe generosity and goodness, blah, blah, blah. I increase the output by 17%. So he's using a lot of yeah, creative words, but also talking about numbers, talking about performance, talking about what is he adding into the job in a yeah, very funny and, and creative um, copy. So worth reading. It's available in, in, in many uh, blogs and yeah, you can have a look later on when the um, session finished. Moving on, um, customize your public URL. How many of you that have already a, a LinkedIn profile have a customized um, URL? Raise your hand or typing on the chat. I see some hands up. That's good. Uh, you, you are an advanced uh, user then. Uh, for the rest, don't worry, that's very easy to do and I'm going to show you how to do it. Um, it's right on the, um, on the right side of your profile. You go and click on edit public profile and URL and then basically by default you have like a random number or name in there. So you can type in your name. So for example, in my case, it would be my name and last name. So linkedin.com and then Ana Jimenez, you can customize it. Maybe if it's a very common name, it's already taken, so you can customize it a bit. But this is very, very helpful, especially when you are applying to, um, to jobs or when you are sharing your uh, profile externally. It's, it's very professional that your name is in there. Again, we are working on your personal brand, so this is 
uh, an important piece of it. So, and it also is going to make it easier for you to be found in Google search. Anna, wait, something, wait. So, someone okay. muted me, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I, I saw a It's, it's a okay, it's okay, yeah, 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 okay. So I was saying that, yeah, it, this will make it easier as well for anyone uh, who is uh, trying to, to find you and type in on, on LinkedIn search or on Google search. So imagine you're applying for a job, they're gonna run some quick research on you, typing on Google your name and then your LinkedIn profile is gonna pop up and stand up. So it's also good for your um, SEO and for your brand reputation and, and personal brand. Okay, so moving on, there is also another section, and this is like your CV, your digital CV, but with a lot more uh, features and, and capabilities. So here you can also add your skills. So there are like a lot of suggested skills uh, and choose those strategically. So again, back to your keywords and what do you want the others to see? Uh, and to know about you? Is it your abilities? Is it your strengths? Is it your expertise? Um, LinkedIn recommends five or more uh, skills, so at least five minimum, and it can be up to 50 skills. So you do have space to add as many as you want. You can see on the screenshot, so add a new skill, and then you can do a search, and it's also suggesting a few skills based on your um profile and information you added there and based on data from linkedin that increases by 27 the appearance in 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 the searches and by 17 your profile view so just by filling your skills in there you're going to increase the times that your profile is appearing and your profile is view which is really good when some headhunters and some recruiters are trying to find new talent, they're gonna go to, to LinkedIn and try to find the right profile. So that increase your opportunities. And there is another section as well, which is the feature section. Uh, it's not that common that everyone use it, but it's available there. And it's also like a very visual space for you to promote anything that you want. Um, in this feature section. So you can add any rich content like photos, links, videos, presentations. Imagine you posted an article, you posted there. Imagine you have a portfolio uh, of your previous projects or you are, I don't know, a designer and you want to showcase your work, you can upload it there. And it's very, very visible. Okay, so moving on, we are good now. We have all the knowledge to have our rockstar profile and I have I hope that if you haven't already you apply some of those tips and you let me know how how it worked um, moving on build real relationships that's also very very important again this is not only on on LinkedIn but also on face-to-face um, -face events so your network is your net worth it's super important and I'm going to repeat it again and again it's not about quantity, so not how many contacts you have, it's about the quality of those contacts and that are really adding value uh, to, to you. So how to build real relationships, invest proper time in networking, participating groups. So in LinkedIn, you do have so many different groups about topics or so about um, travel and hospitality, about tourism, about um, specific universities, about specific cities. So there are groups for everything. So try to do some research, join groups, and you will find other professionals and other students and other people whose interests align with you. So you can find some synergies and those are relevant people for you to connect because you share some, um, yeah, so, some background or you share some uh, goals and, and, and some um, areas in common. Connect with relevant people, so find the right people for you who may not be the relevant people for me, so understand what's the added value and what can you offer to them as well, and personalize your invitation to connect. That's something that everyone is lazy 
about, I'm just going to send an invite and you just press on send and you don't dedicate one minute of your time to just write one line. One line is fine, but just write something in there and mention, I don't know, how you met. Maybe you, you saw that person talking uh, in, in a webinar. So let's say you invite me on LinkedIn. Don't just press on invite, just edit and, and tell me that you joined today's webinar and you are putting in practice the learnings and you would like to be um, a contact and add me on your network. So always that's uh, important to increase the, the first contact and, and the success of your invitation. And you can also follow, up, follow relevant influencers for your industry. So it's not like adding a new contact, you can just follow them. And then on your feed, you're going to read and see everything that they uh, publish. So you may have um, a lot of people that yeah, you want to hear about what they are posting or what are the activities that are happening in their professional and, and company life. Building real relationships. So again, moving from the theory to, to how and, and some examples. If you want to follow relevant influencers, you can see there is a follow button on the top of their profile. It's not available for all profiles, only for profiles that are um, sharing frequently content and so, or you could connect with them, which is um, on the right side of it. And then I added a few examples of invitations that I received. And uh, to my point about personalizing the invite that you are sending to connect. It can be something short like for example, here, the first example is someone uh, who joined, who, who signed up for one webinar I did some time ago. So she invited me and on the invite wrote, looking forward to your webinar on Thursday. Okay, I know why she is adding me and I can um, yeah, understand the reason. So I'm going to accept it. Otherwise, I would be like, okay, who is this person and why? Do I want her in my network? I don't know who she is. I don't know what she is expecting for me, from me, and I don't know why she's adding me. And the same, um, the second one. So, hello, Anna. Your profile popped up on my LinkedIn feed today. I enjoyed reading about your background, blah, blah, blah. I would like to connect and add you to my professional network. So, in this case, yeah, he just want to add me on the network and maybe find some common opportunities, but he's uh, dedicating some time and, and really putting some effort into connecting with me. You may decide to accept it or not. That's a different story, which I'm not going to enter into. Everyone can um, decide yeah, who, who they want to be contact with or, or not. Then follow relevant hashtags. So you can also, same as you would do on Instagram or on any other uh, network LinkedIn works the same way. You can follow some some hashtags like I don't know, travel and hospitality job opportunities or um, webinars in tourists, whatever hashtag you want to follow, and then those content will appear appear on your feed. And as I mentioned before, and this work face to face events or um, online networking engage with your connection. So. If they post about something, if they wrote an article, like it, comment it, share it, ask questions. So that's important. You want to maintain and, and nurture this relationship. You don't know where it's going to take you. And the last step is create and create epic content. And here again, I'm, I'm not going to go too much into detail because this one could take an hour about how to create relevant content and so on. But if you really want to become a specialist, if you want to stand out for what you are good at, um, and you, if you want to be influential and you want to score that dream job, that can be a good start. Start posting about content and, and, and something that you know, share your knowledge. You don't need to have 10 years experience to apply to a job. You may have the knowledge. How you prove you have that knowledge and, and these right skills becoming yeah, a, a person of interest and, and sharing relevant content. So your network and the audience that you want to target is going to say, wow, they are really specialists. I don't care about the experience. I don't care 
that they haven't worked in this or that, but they really know what they are talking about. So creating and creating content is uh, yeah, an important and uh, recommended uh, practice if you want to move on um, in your career. So some tips there. Speak to your specific audience is not the same. If you are talking to managing directors of the um, top 10 uh, travel and hospitality companies that if you are talking to, I don't know, um, the HR or if you are talking to some potential um, entrepreneurs because you want to work on a startup and it's a different approach. So think about who your audience is and then speak to them with the language appropriate language and, and appropriate content. Generate conversation, so important. It's not just you posting and posting. You want people to engage with your content and how you do that. You ask questions, you ask uh, and open a debate. You tell your story. Storytelling always works when you explain something that happened to you and then you ask your network what would they do if they were you. So try to generate and, and, and have this snowball effect where everyone wants to jump in and, and share their opinion and ask you a question and so and that's also going to increase the relevance of your content. Golden hour, there is a golden hour uh, for publishing on LinkedIn, which is the first 60 minutes after posting. So think about when you want to post it to have the maximum uh, reach. And, and yeah, that's going to be important that the first 60 minutes are the, um, the golden hour. Use hashtags between three and five recommended that I'm sure all of you are familiar with hashtags because in all the networks uh, it works the same way. And add rich content when possible. Again, it's not the same with your profile, just text and no picture. Same here, if you post something, just text, it won't stand out as if you add the text and then a picture or a video or an external media so it's more visual and when you see the feed it's going to stand out from the crowd so think about it as a marketing piece about the right time posting of course you have to check time zone so if you are targeting a specific region or if you want to go global that's more challenging because time zone you will never find the perfect time for all regions so consider time zone factors and then check when your audience is connected you can see here a graph from linkedin there are yeah, many different ones linkedin global engagement so you can see when which days and, and the hours slots that have the highest engagement rate so normally it's between 7 a.m. and 2 p.m. and the days with more activity. Obviously it's a professional network, so weekends are very quiet. So you may want to post something on a Wednesday or on a Thursday, for example, and during the morning. And yeah, then depending on your audience, if it's EMEA and North America, or if you want to target, I don't know, um, Asia, you may want to adjust that. What makes a post epic? And here I'm no journalist, so you may have other specialists that can give you more tips around that, but some easy uh, tips here. Use a hook, so a catchy statement. Start with a question or with a quote. Your message matters, so think really good and, and review the content of your post. Research, so you don't need to be the, the only creator of that content. You can also use uh, some credible publications or some external articles to link with your content. Call to action, as I mentioned before, generate conversations, so what an engaging question or a clear call to action. Hashtags, I mentioned it a few times, so use some relevant hashtags or maybe tag people. If you are posting about a project, you are very um, happy because or you, you just graduated and, and you are super proud of it. You may want to tag the school. You may want to tag your professors and thank you. Thank them for that and your colleagues. So think about yeah, what makes more sense for for the post. And then, as I mentioned, insert some media, some videos and some external links to it. And the most important, be authentic and, and be yourself. So 
don't write something that it doesn't sound like you and, and that you wouldn't want to be remembered for, right? Because again, back to the privacy question, this is out there, this is online, it's available. So really think what you want to share uh, because it's gonna stay there. Questions so far? Anyone? No, I don't have any questions. Okay, perfect. So we have time for the bonus, which is your LinkedIn SSL. So if you don't know what SSL is, I didn't know before starting um, to play around LinkedIn and so on, and, and it's a, a more advanced um, functionality from LinkedIn. So the SSA is the Social Selling Index. So that's basically uh, an index that measures how effective you are in LinkedIn, in establishing your professional brand, in finding the right people for your profile, in engaging with insights, and also in building relationships. This is updated daily, so it can change. So you could check now and see how do you rank. Uh, you can go to this URL, type in, and you have to be logged in login LinkedIn and immediately you will see something like what you see on my right screen. This is uh, probably I, I don't have the same rank now, but when I check it, this was my my rank. So you can check it now. Start updating your profile, work on your picture, your description, your headline, start posting and then in a few days, in a few weeks, check again your SSE, SSI and see if you ranked better, if something changed there. It's a very interesting experiment. I love doing that. And I'm going to show you an example later on. And it's good to see, OK, where do I start? And just by some small changes here and there, how does it impact on, on your rank? And also if your network increase or not, maybe you start receiving some invitations or some job opportunities. So the better and the higher your rank is, the more uh, reachable and, and searchable you are on LinkedIn and the better your, your personal and professional brand is. So I'm going to share here an example. So that's from this year, 6th January. So that's a personal example for, for my profile, I did kind of an experiment for a webinar that I did earlier in the year. So when I checked my social selling index, my industry rank was 4% and my network rank, I was on the top 19%. I don't, I won't go into details about the rest of the um, components here, but I, what I want to show you today is that after that Day, I posted an article on, on LinkedIn talking about how Barcelona uh, was becoming a hub for travel startups. This was an external article that was published in Skiff, which is a very well-known uh, media. So I really love the content. I live in Barcelona. I love Barcelona. I think that it is a really great city for travel uh, professionals and for travel startups. So I decided to post something with my opinion about why Barcelona is such a great city. I mentioned the, um, the journalist. I mentioned a few uh, entrepreneurs and, and professionals that are in Barcelona and that is are relevant for, for the article because they are employing a lot of young talents. And yeah, I just posted. After that, I had 9,326 views, which is the highest I ever had. I never had such a number of views of, of anything I posted. I'm not the kind of person that posts normally, but for this topic, I thought like, okay, I, I love it. I really want to talk about it and share it. And also it was a good experiment because I was about to do the webinar about this topic. So what happened after immediately? So the week after, you can see, and I, the only thing I did was posting this article. I didn't do anything else. And I had 202 likes and 34 comments, and then the 9,000, more than 9,000 views. So thanks to that article and the engagement and the views and the comments, I 
move up to the top 1% of my industry, so from the 4 to the 1%. And more surprisingly, I was um, on the 19th top on the network, on my network, and I move up to the four, uh, top 4% 4 of my network. And only because I share something that my network thought was relevant and they engage with it. Of course, a week after, I didn't post anything and I moved back and down to the rank. So this is to say that, yeah, if you want to stand out, if you want people to look at your profile and, and to uh, follow you, you need to be constant. Uh, it needs to make sense again with you. So post about something that, yeah, it, it, it makes you feel comfortable and, and it sounds like it's yourself and it's authentic. Maybe it doesn't make sense for you to create content, but this is an example. After that, a lot of people started to to write me or invite me. So it's giving you an increased opportunity of, of visibility and it's open up uh, yeah, new opportunities and increase your network. So that was just an example. My follow up activity, I'm not going to know if you do it or not, but the school is going to know. And if you do it, I would love you uh, to share your feedback and your findings on LinkedIn. Feel free to post uh, something and, and, and tag me. So that could be a good way to start generating content. So the follow up activity is how influential you are in your network and activity. So obviously apply the first tips that I gave you today about your profile, about um, engaging with your network and then check your um, index today. So take a screenshot, otherwise you will forget. Take a screenshot the day when you took it, then do all the work with your profile, picture, he uh, headline, description, keywords, start interacting, invite everyone who joined this webinar, invite your professors, invite your um, colleagues. If, if you have been working or, or having an internship, invite um, and add your network there, start interacting with them and keep track of the impact of everything you are doing during these days on these weeks on your ranking and if it's good or if it's bad or if nothing happened please share i would love to hear how it went and if you land in your dream job i would love to hear that as well uh, that's the best feedback that we could have right after the webinar um you are ready to find your dream job so happy networking that's it from me, I hope uh, you like the content and uh, you start putting it in practice. Does anyone have questions? No, no. Thank you a lot. It will, it will help me a lot because I was not used to use LinkedIn very often. And now with this tips, I believe that I'm going to be more successful in LinkedIn. That's great to hear. Good luck with it. Thank you for the feedback. And uh, Anisio, just to let you know that if you need help, we have uh, you can contact me or uh, I can refer you to one of our career coaches if you need further assistance in, you know, um, enhancing your current LinkedIn or you can forward it to me and I can review it and get back to you. But I have a question, Anna, if I may. Yes. About the posts, uh, and uh, this goes for the students. I don't know if they thought about it and they, I don't know, for some reason they uh, didn't want to ask it. Is being students now, what, what do you think, what, what type of um, posts they can share um, to increase the SSSI as, as, as you showed before, or to increase networking, or do you have any examples that they can focus on and develop by the setting with a short version of a post and mm -hmm. I think it depends on, on what the dream job is obviously so I'm going to give you an example that I, I like and I my area of specialization is more marketing communication so I do follow a lot of um influencers in the professional industry obviously um but i also did so many different webinars and and um teach at schools and universities so i also have students in my in my network right 
So one of, of those students wanted to land in a marketing job and, and they didn't know where to start. They didn't have experience. So what they did, well, what she did, it was um, a she in that case. What she did is starting posting on LinkedIn, analyzing marketing campaigns from uh, companies that were currently doing an advertising in, in Instagram or a, a viral campaign. So what she did is, yeah, just taking some marketing campaigns and, and some uh, ongoing TV spots and giving her opinion like, wow, this campaign is the best I have seen for this reason and this reason. And some comments I would do this differently because this or that. So she was, she started like something super casual. And then the company started to reach out to her and to ask for her reviews and her advice. And, and she started working for a startup as a marketing um, manager for, for that startup. So basically she was good in creating content and, and in her personal life, she wanted to apply that in the professional life and she just started yeah, tagging the companies that she was doing the, the analysis. Companies started to comment and engage with the post that she was doing. So that can be a way you don't need to have experience to create relevant content. Uh, you need to add value into it. You can also, I don't know, um, read relevant articles about trends or about don't know, a market research and then post and add your comments, your vision of it. Uh, what do you think? How do you see it in your country or in your city? So you don't need to have experience to, yeah, to bring your knowledge and, and show what do you know and, and what can you do for a company? But again, it, it's depending on the role that you want to apply in the area of a specialization. It goes harder if you want to be an accountant, obviously. So I don't, I cannot think of an example of posting something on on LinkedIn about financials and so. But in the travel industry, yeah, you can be creative and you can find ways of of posting something, starting with something simple, just giving your opinion, or maybe someone else posted an article and you want to start by commenting that article instead of you posting your own article. Start with the simplest, which is yeah, commenting someone else uh, post and, and interview an article. Hey, I saw your interview on, I don't know, on La Vanguardia. I thought it was great because you talk about this, about that. So it doesn't need to be your own content. Sometimes it can be curated and it can link to an external uh, source or article. I don't know if that was the answer that you you have mute. I am muted. I'm muted. Yeah, that was uh, fantastic. I don't know if any of the students want to uh, elaborate further or have any comments about this because I have a few more questions since you're not making any. And no, I, no, I, yeah. I, I think that this was very interesting. Hello, everyone. I think that this was very interesting because I have no posts at all on my LinkedIn account and I only have one connection from now like so. <laughs> So this was very interesting. Thank you. Good. It's so really you, good. you have a lot to do and it can only be better for sure. So yeah. <laughs> yes, the yes. thing is, is that uh, sorry, Anisio, yes, go on. Yeah, uh, for me, it was very helpful to this, this part, the, the, the answer for your question, because I was I was having difficulties to know how to actually create like more connections with mm -hmm. the people and bring uh, bring more attention to uh to my linkedin and mm -hmm. I, I think even though like uh it's difficult not every area gonna be like marketing i think the 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 tips that you gave us was very very exciting and i think it would be very helpful i'm gonna try to do this in economics and, and business stuff i think it would be i think it's it's possible to do it so thank yes. you thank you and i, I would love to hear how it yeah. goes it can also be perhaps a project or a team project or an individual project that you did a survey and you came up with a result and you can post it. I was going to suggest this. Yes. So this is another idea or perhaps 
something like uh, an internship experience and what you've learned for, from a particular field that you want to share with your network. So this can be another one. So start with less and more uh, simple ways of communicating your ideas. This is what I would advise. And uh, it should be related to the um, industry or the sector or the department that you want to your targeting. And uh, having said this, this leads to another question that I have that goes to you, Anna, again. Do you have, I'm going to be a bit more particular now because from a group of friends and colleagues that I have who are involved in the tourism and hospitality management industry, they quite often say that this is a very particular industry and it, and it needs a particular way of networking and approaching people. So do you have any tips of how, for example, someone can look for jobs in um, big hotel chains or it doesn't have to be tier one for now, perhaps a smaller, you know, tier two, tier three hotel chains uh, and particular departments. Anisio said that uh, he's interested mostly in the marketing. Is that correct? Would would hotels, for example, be something that you would like to do, Anisio? I'm sorry, can you, can you repeat? I couldn't hear very well. Sorry, it was a bit long, that's why. My question was a bit long. It was a statement and then a question. But I don't know if Anna understood what I wanted to say. So it's, yep. tips, it's tips specifically for you to uh, help you network with specific people or key persons in key positions in the hospitality, in hotels, in tourism, in travel agencies, for example, or any other things that Anna? Yeah, I, I think it works very much the same in, in almost all sectors. At the end, we are humans and, and we like socializing. So you 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 need to, to start by that. So of course you're using maybe LinkedIn, but there is a person on the other side. So it doesn't matter if it's yeah a, a travel industry related or if it's a, I don't know a bank or uh, anyone who is on LinkedIn is there for the same reason that you are. So that that's like the the start base. Um, I think it's important to understand yeah what what the other person. So depending who you want to connect, what they are looking for, what can be valuable for them and then when you create that connection as I said tell them why you want to connect with them I receive hundreds of invites uh, I don't accept them all because I don't know what what they want why they want to to connect with me I, I don't see any connection we don't work maybe in the same industry so unless they explain the reason that they find it it's uh, relevant to to have a connection. I won't accept them. So if you want to connect with I don't know, with the um, finance or the marketing director of a hotel chain or uh, an online travel agency, think about okay, what why do I want to connect with this person? Is because I've read an article and I think that they are doing a great job and I would like to learn more about it and therefore stay in touch and and see what else they are working on so that can be a reason why or maybe you saw a job offer and you want to reach out and and just tell them look i saw i saw this offer and i was wondering if it would be appropriate um that we talk i think my skills are the right ones do you have any feedback do you see do you see my profile is relevant for it and ask them for advice so it depends on the purpose of of why you are connecting with them, but also trying to understand who is on the other side and, and why they will accept your invitation. So why is it um, that you are inviting them if you yeah, have a special interest, not just for the sake of adding one more in your network? Yeah, that, that's fantastic. So to, to give an example, when you send that invitation to connect to a person, there is um, how do we call this, um, a note that comes up and it says, do you want to send a note 
accompanying yeah. your invitation. So what are we, I would advise you, and I assume Anna as well, this is what she meant by um, explaining to, you know, giving an example why you want to connect is always add a note, especially yeah. to, you know, key persons or recruiters or it, 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 it's, it enhances your chances of getting accepted and for the person to get back to you. Another thing that we have covered in the past in some previous sessions, some of you were there, is approaching a person for an informational interview. We have explained what informational interviews are in the past and we said that you can approach people key in key positions in the companies that you see yourself working in the near future and you can connect with them and ask for an informational interview, which in short means that you want to find out more about the company, the role, uh, what they do. You never ask, is there an internship or a job position available? You usually need to ask, can I have a meeting with you? Or can we chat a bit more about what the organization is doing, what departments they have. I can see myself working in this company. I really admire. So you can start a conversation and this person can then refer you for a position or can say, listen, there will be an opening in a month or something. OK, we have this workshop which is available in our recorded sessions. This is in uh, Resources My Document Library for those who did not attend the session or uh, didn't uh, have the chance to have a look. Please go through it and it, it gives a lot of details. It's called Internship Search Strategies, but it also applies for jobs. It's the same tactics. So that's all for me. I don't have any other questions. What about you guys? This is for you. You should be asking this. <laughs> don't be shy. And on that note, while they think on their, their questions, to, to your point about um, the, the message, the note space, mm -hmm. when it's on mobile, you don't have that option. So mm -hmm. if you want to edit the note, do it from desktop, because on mobile it's sending you straight away the invite yes. without the yeah. possibility of adding a note. Mm. So if it's a new person, better use desktop. Yes. Any question? Are you going to start using some of the um, tips from today? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Great. Because I'm definitely going to need uh, more help to be more uh, uh, more in more uh, interactive in LinkedIn because I was just see before I was just in LinkedIn as as a social or uh, not social media just to, to talk about business but actually you can like make good connections beyond like this business so i really i'm really interested on it awesome so uh, if there are any uh, i have a question from lenny actually it's not a question he uh, is saying that trying to add you, Anna, but cannot send a message to explain the purpose. Of, of course you can. If you have difficulties, let's have a meeting sometime uh, tomorrow and I can show you, Lenny, how to do it. When you click connect, let me see if I can share my screen and show you. It should be very straightforward, yeah. But we are already connected. Let me find Lenny then. If I can find. Ernie. Uh, no, I cannot. So Lenny, yes, please contact me tomorrow and I can show you how to do this. Okay. All right, so that's all. If you don't have anything else, Anna, we, we would like to thank you so much for everything. This was a fantastic presentation. And I'm sure uh, our students would uh, go about and test drive all the things you've said. 
hopefully. So that's all. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And yeah, good luck all of you for um, your next steps in, in your professional career. And I hope you all find your dream job and um, yeah, share it and, and um, celebrate it on, on LinkedIn so I can see it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, Anna. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. See you soon. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank bye. You.